today. Um, before I begin my speech, I have to warn you guys that this is illegal to perform in public streets as it is considered reckless driving by the police. So to be able to actually perform these kinds of maneuvers, just go to your local race track and attempt them there where it is legal. So did you guys know that um, that drifting has increased in such great popularity that many mountain passes where illegal street racing and drifting takes place uh, speed bumps, which are called drift bumps by drifters, have been added to entrances and exits of corners to discourage people from partaking in these sorts of activities. Um, after my, my research on the topic and personal experience um, at performing these drifts and many instructional videos, I have found three easy steps that can be taken to perform these kinds of maneuvers. So the first step into performing a smooth drift is the turning and steering part of it as well as the gearing and speed. This is essential for beginners because you don't want to be going too fast and lose control of your vehicle when you're early learning how to drift. So the appropriate speed to be going at for beginners is about 30 miles per hour and you would be in second gear when you're going 30 miles per hour at 3000 RPM. This allows enough torque to go through the drive line to the wheels to allow them to spin and lose traction and perform a drift. The second part of this step is the turning and steering. As you can see here, he starts off going completely straight and starts turning into the apex of the corner. And once at the apex, that is where he performs the drift, which you do by inducing oversteering, um, which comes later. But as you approach this corner, you want to be able to turn exactly or estimated about halfway into it so that you could drift completely around the rest of the corner. If you started off too early, you'll end up running wide and you could essentially go off the track. If you started too late, you'll be already on the straightaway, so you have to end the drift early. After you become proficient at these um, first couple of steps, you could go on to inducing oversteer. This can be done in two, two ways, or many other ways, but two of the simplest ways is clutch kick and by using a handbrake. The first method of this, is by the simplest one I personally conceive, is the handbrake method. Um, this can be done when you're approaching the corners and at the apex of the corner, and you're turning the vehicle, by then you will pull the handbrake while letting go of the throttle. And this would cause the back tires to lock up and that would cause the back end to start to slide out. Make sure, you have to make sure that you keep your thumb on the handbrake because you know how to release the handbrake as well and step on the throttle again. So as you're pushing the corner and start turning, you'll pull the handbrake, holding on to the handbrake, and you're, once you feel the back end start to slide out, that's when you release it and step on the throttle again. This will cause the back tires to lose its traction and you'll begin the drift. The second method is the clutch kick. This is done by, as you're approaching the corner, you step on the clutch, which is the third pedal to the left, and the gas at the same time, and that will raise the RPMs to a higher level near red line. And once you're at the apex of the corner, that is when you release the clutch while still holding on to the gas pedal. And that will send a shock load of torque towards the drive line, which drives the back, the rear wheels. And that will cause them to break traction, and they will begin to spin out like this. And that's when you'll essentially start to drift. The third step to drifting is controlling, sustaining the drift, as well as ending the drift. So as you, as you have induced oversteering and you are drifting, which is basically sliding around the corner, you have to be able to control the drift by doing a method of counter steering. This is turning the wheels in the opposite direction as to which you turned them in the first place. So if you're coming around the right corner and you um, turn your steering wheel to the right, as you're drifting, you would switch it and turn it in the opposite direction, which would be the left, as seen here. This he is performed. The image is showing the vehicles turning into the direction that you want to go. That is shown right here too. He counter steered to the direction he wanted to go, and the car essentially whips itself back into a 
straight position. So while doing this as well, to sustain the drift, you have to continue pressure on the throttle. A rule of thumb is about 80% of throttle pressure. This will, keep, this will keep the power going to the rear wheels enough to keep them spinning and to keep traction, to keep the traction broken, allowing you to continue drifting. To end the drift is a bit tricky though because it is dangerous as well. It could, because if you end the drift too early, you could essentially um, cause a counter steer, cause the car to counter steer again. So it would go from this direction it would turn the other direction as well and it would cause like a pendulum effect and make the car, which is fish tailing and that it could be difficult to control and you could essentially car crash the car. But if it is done correctly and you end it on the right time, which should be at the end of the, at the, end of the corner when you're coming around, you could perform a smooth drift as seen in these pictures by these professionals that have had years of experience. They are performing drift right now, right here. He came around the corner, he's still doing it, and he's counter-steering right here to go back into the straightaway. Now that I have demonstrated to you guys how to drift by using the three steps, turning, um, controlling, sustaining, as well as speeding the gear, and ending the drift, um, you can go out to your local racetrack and practice your drift yourself and test your skills um, become proficient at it and could join certain small competitions and work your way up to one of the biggest competitions which is the Formula Drift um, race competition which is highly rewarding.